Um, my name is Lydia, and if you're new to my channel, um, I make tutorials on how to paint dot mandalas. Um, and in this tutorial, um, I'm going to show the very beginner um, how to go about it. Maybe what you want to purchase, and um, paint-wise, tool-wise, substrate-wise, um, what you, um, what the techniques are, and what is a mandala, right? So, um, I've got some beautiful natural light coming in, so that's what I'm going to use today. Um, what is a mandala? Uh, the word mandala is actually a Sanskrit word, and it means a uh, circle. You start, um, you've got a center dot, and then you work your way out, and your design can get as big as you want it to go um, and there is no right or wrong way as far as um, how many dots do you want to start with around the circle you can start with four or six you can go to eight twelve sixteen I mean it really really doesn't matter um, different starting points will obviously give you uh, different outcomes on your designs and uh, yeah there's no right or wrong way and don't be too hard on yourself I know a lot of us are perfectionists and we want it just right, we want it perfect, um, but we're not machines, you know, and if someone wants a completely perfect piece, they can go and buy a print that is made by a computer and that will be perfect, but we are artists and we're humans and we make mistakes and that's totally okay. Um, don't freak out if your drops go together, you know, and um, and, and just scrap the whole piece. No, no. Take a step back, take five, walk away, come back in. Um, it's about the journey, you know. It's about enjoying what you're doing. Um, relaxing, it's very relaxing and uh, meditative. And um, it's just, it's a great experience. So don't be too hard on yourself. Now I'm going to pan down as I talk through some of these steps here. So um, go ahead and do that. And there are these, um, these, I don't know what to call them. I don't really know what they are. Like maybe painters swatches or something. Um, is that a word? <laughs> Where there's like five or six colors, you know, and they are a, um, I know people use them for inspiration, for color inspiration. I don't know what they're called. Actually, if you know what they're called, how about you leave me a comment below and let me know what those things are actually technically called and how people can find them and that'll help out all the viewers. I'd appreciate it. Another thing I wanna to touch on real quick is inspiration. Where do you get your color inspiration from? Um, plants, especially flowers, they have awesome beautiful perfect color combinations um actually i've looked up photos of like sunsets gorgeous sunsets and they have the most perfect color combinations obviously um you know your tools the the colors of your tools or the colors of the jars or um clothing like i've got a, a bright blue skirt or um, you know, other like patchwork, um, tapestries, just look around, you know, there's color inspiration everywhere. All right. So, um, to start the very beginning, I like to, um, lay down newspaper or poster board or something just so you don't ruin your tabletop or, uh, tablecloth. Um, so I just use this old poster board and I, I reuse it all the time. So it gets a mess and that's perfectly fine because it's uh, very inexpensive and um, you can replace it way easier than you can a actual table. <laughs> so I do suggest grabbing something to protect your table to start off with. Um, okay, I would say Q-tips are a must. Um, some people get the, the pointy kind and some other people get fancier ones, but I think these work just perfectly fine for me. I use my old um, cotton swab box um, for my garbage bin. Cause I mean, I'm just, I put one on one side of my table and one on the other side of my table. And that's just, I grab one out of here and then I clean off my painting and then I throw it into the, the garbage bin. And that works 
great for me. Um, okay, I would say start off and get you some black paint. Um, this is just the Apple Barrel brand. This is matte and this is a gloss. Uh, it just depends on the project that I'm doing, um, which one I will choose, uh, or a color. It's okay to use um, a color. You don't have to use black as a background. It's just, uh, it's just a very common color because it does make the colors pop. Um, but you absolutely can use any color that you want. Um, I would suggest grabbing you some cardstock. This is just a uh, poster board. You can get them, um, uh, you can get it black if you want um, the black to start with. I would suggest getting you some cardstock to start off on. And then you can graduate up to, um, to poster, uh, no, I'm sorry, a uh, canvas board. This is a canvas board, okay? Um, pretty inexpensive. You can find some I know at Walmart and uh, Michael's and Hobby Lobby and stuff like that. Craft stores. Um, and they lend themselves uh, very nicely to dot art. Um, a lot of people choose these actually over uh, stretched canvas. But um, they are definitely perfect for beginners because they are a hard surface and um, it doesn't have the bounce back that a stretched canvas would have. Um, definitely something to get you going here. So I would say start off with cardstock, just playing around to get a feel for um, how the dots uh, work and how they'll look. And then definitely go ahead and move on to a canvas board. Um, if not, just straight canvas. Um, also wood circles. Um, these work well. If you wanted to try that, those are also inexpensive. Um, I would say get yourself a palette. Um, I got this at Walmart for, I think it was a dollar, I want to say. Um, Michael's, I've seen packs of, you know, like variety packs for five different sizes, shapes. Um, uh, but they are like five dollars or something. So if you just need one, go on and grab you one. These are nice because you can, uh, wash them and reuse them over and over. Um, if you don't want to invest, you know, the time or money or, or you don't, just don't have one on hand, go ahead and uh, use a paper plate or uh, uh, even a plate. Uh, as long as you wash it off soon after, you should be good to go. Um, okay, you want a ruler. You're going to have to need, you're gonna need a ruler to draw on guidelines, unless you don't want to start with guidelines. Now, I never really used to use guidelines, but I do um, most of the time now. Not always, actually, but... Uh, uh, half and half, but, uh, but they do help to keep your lines straight, especially starting off. Um, okay, so what do you need to draw your lines with? These General's Charcoal White pencils, um, I'm not a real big fan of these. I do like that you can get a good point, you know, because you need a nice thin line. Um, and that would be the only thing that I really like about this. I can't get the lines off, um, and I don't always want to go back and paint over the lines, or um, I do fades on my canvases, and you know to get the the right color to draw to paint over those guidelines just doesn't work for me. So I pretty much abandoned these altogether. Um, regular pencil is kind of like. Um, it's a go-to. It's my go-to. I I do love it. It you just draw it on, you know, and then you just erase them off at the end once your paint is dry. Whoops. And it and it works, you know. They they work. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, chalk is one I have been using quite a bit lately. People don't like the chalk, and I understand completely why. It does. Um, it can leave a powdery film, which um, can make your paint pull up, which doesn't make for a good dot. So I get it. Um, but I usually draw them on real light, blow real hard, uh, and all the excess chalk uh, will go away. Or if it doesn't, I will just kind of swipe it away. Um, and then also you could always use a cotton swab and uh, dampen it and wipe up your lines right before you put your dots on. That would also work if you have chalk. Chalk's very inexpensive and easy to find, readily available. Um, 
This is a recent suggestion. This is soapstone. Now we have soapstone here at the house because we carve it and it's fun to play with. So I just had this on hand. So I went on and tried it and it does indeed leave, leave marks. Um, I'm not positive how well they come off yet. I'm not going to kick this to the curb and I'm not going to endorse it yet <laughs> because I'm not sure. I, I need to play with this a little bit more before I, uh, before I decide whether I like it or not. But, um, it does indeed work. So, uh, if you have soapstone, give it a try. Um, what works for one doesn't necessarily work for another. So it's, uh, to each their own. I always say that, um, you may not agree with the things that I suggest and that's why I just try to be uh, broad about my suggestions here. Um, you can get a spritz bottle to add water to your paint um, if it's too thick. You can also use a you know gloss fluid medium. Um, any kind of medium would work uh, to thick and really thin paints um, or to thin really thick paints. I think that pretty much goes either way. Uh, but water is um, usually in your kitchen and it's, it's there. So, uh, I would suggest getting, uh, just a spray bottle or something, a dropper that you can just add a little bit at a time. You can always, um, add more and you can't necessarily take it out. So, uh, go slow with the water. Um, paints themselves. There are so many paint brands and not only brands, but kinds. Um, so you know, okay, I'm not going to talk about all of them because that would just be, you know, too much to talk about and to take in. But, um, right now I would say, go get you some Deco Art Americana regular, not the glossy enamels. I mean, you can, but definitely Deco Art Americana is just... It's the perfect texture right out of the bottle for dotting. Um, it's perfect for brush if you're going to plan on using brushes. Um, and it, it works great with, uh, with tools as well. So I would say Deco Art Americana is the one that I would at least encourage you to try um, early off. Once you understand more about paint texture uh, and what you are looking for and, 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 and wanting, I would, uh, at that point, play around with different um, indoor, outdoor, multi-surface stuff. Um, it's thicker, but, you know, you, you become familiar with the fact that uh, there's a certain, a really certain um, fluidity that you that you need, you know, that you are looking for that works great for you and, and for dots. So I would, I would start with Deco Art Americana and then I would play around, um, and get you some other kinds. Uh, but they have lots and lots of colors and I like, they have a little sticker on top that you can just see, uh, and, and grab quick. Um, get you the primary colors that way you can mix and match and you're not spending too much money and investing too much on something that you may or may not get into. Um, so I would definitely just get a few colors. You know, you get, um, what is it? Yellow, blue, and red. And then that way you can get orange and purple and green out of there too. So at least get you three bottles, uh, get you some black. Okay, what else is there? Uh, dotting tools, tools themselves. Um, I've got these. Um, so, Red Heart Crystallites is um, it's a good one to grab. Um, the Susan Bates uh, plastic crochet hooks. This is a good set, too. Now, you can get the smaller set of... Uh, of the crystallites and uh, I think there's five in that set. Um, but uh, yeah, you can get those too. These are basically the same as these. So that's why I'm showing you these, but I don't want to dig out the package for the, but they're the same thing. So same thing. And then also the nail stylus dotting tools. Let's see if I can get this to focus on here. 
Okay, so what I've done is I've numbered mine, five being the largest and one being the smallest. So if you hear me referring to a size, that's what I'm talking about. Um, I find on the other end, they're they are all the same and they're about a size two. So I just use the, the one ends there. Okay, that's for tools, if you're wanting to use dotting tools. And then um, I would say go grab yourself a one inch or two inch uh, paintbrush. And these just, um, these are for putting on your base coat on your canvas and they just make really quick work of it and really nice even uh, and nice even paint job. So I would suggest going and grabbing yourself one or a one or a two inch uh, paintbrush for that. Um, if you like painting with brushes instead of tools, um, I've got tons and tons, but I will show you a few. I would say um, the uh, number two, these are actually just cheap paintbrushes. They're just, a, it's just a round paintbrush. It's just a round paintbrush, that's it. This is size two, uh, here's a 10. Um, you can grab small detail brushes. Those are good to have for your teeny tiny dots. Um, so it's just whatever you like. And see here, how to actually dot. Let me show you how to actually go about dotting. Okay, so let's say, I'll use the uh, Americana so you can see. Now I am guilty of painting right out of the lid. I don't have an issue, this is what it does. If you paint out of the lid, it'll leave this kind of dry paint on the edge of the lid or on the edge of the bottle like this, but I just pick it off and I move ahead. I don't really uh, take too much time to freak out about it, but I'm probably going through a lot of paint so I don't have it sitting around for a long time anyway. Um, so I just pour a little bit in the lid and then just turn it off and just rotate it off there so it'll stop flowing on you. I'm gonna zoom in a little and I'm gonna hold it at a slight angle so you can see what I'm doing. So let's say you've got, here's a large tool. Now what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that the whole bottom is completely covered. You don't want to have, you know, half of it covered or part of it covered. You want the whole flat bottom covered, okay? And you don't want it to go up your your tool. That's That just makes for a sloppy um, dot. So you want to get it good and covered. And you don't have to worry about taking that excess paint off. That little bump of paint is perfectly fine. Um, that's that's what you want, if anything. That's what you're it's what you're gonna look for here. So let's make your first center dot. So you go ahead and you always you always want to go straight up and down. Okay? Straight up and down with your with your tool. Um, and when you're pushing down, you don't want to push down real hard and have the paint come uh, and you know kind of like squish out and have nothing in the middle of the dot. That just doesn't that's not what you want. So let's do this. You just want, you do want to push it down evenly enough to where you start to see some paint come out and then pull up. Okay. Let me, let me do that again here. Because I'm on an angle and it's not, it's looking for sloppy, a sloppy job here. I will just. You just go down and come up, okay? And that little bunch of paint there, that's fine because it's that versus this. You don't want to push it real hard, you know, because then you get that. All right, you see how the paint is gone there in the middle? You don't want that. That will actually dry flat, so don't worry about that. But this one, yeah, that's a no-no. You don't want that, okay? And if you get paint all up on there, you know, it just makes for... A, a sloppy dot. So, so just try to get just the just the tip of your of your tool um, covered in paint, and you want it evenly coated, and you want to go straight up and down. Okay, straight up and down, and go down and up. And that's it. Okay, so that's 
that's that. Now you're gonna have to excuse the wonky, the wonky center dot here on this because I was at an angle. I can try to fix it here. Let's see. You can always re-dip and re-dot. There's nothing wrong with doing that. That's perfectly fine, just so you know. Um, I do it all the time. I mean, you have to sometimes. You know, some of the paints that you may buy, that you may uh, experiment with, they they won't be uh, they won't be the good quality uh, deep color that you want. So you just have to re dot, re dip, and re dot, and that's perfectly fine. Okay. Alrighty. Um, another thing is talking about drying. Um, I don't suggest using a high heat blow dryer. Um, it seems to make the paint crack. Not always. I think it depends on the paint and stuff, but it just, I got turned off of it early on, um, dotting, and I never went back to it. I would say a fan. If you're going to be in a rush to dry something, I would use a fan. Okay, um, this is not perfect. I wouldn't, this isn't acceptable to me, but that's just a, uh, example piece, so I'm just going to work with this. Um, now... You can just take a ruler and go from corner to corner and draw your guidelines on. Um, you know what? Let's uh, let's use the soapstone so we can see together how to get it, if it comes off canvas uh, real good or not. Okay. Um, uh, but if, you know, to find your center, and that's just basically where you, you want to start is your center. Just to go ahead and draw an X. Um that's my phone, sorry. Um, but I've got my, one of my guideline stencils. Um, it's just sitting here, so let's go ahead and use that. It just fits right on. And you got your center. Let's see here. And then, um, and you don't have to have guidelines at all. I'm gonna do eight. Yeah, you don't have to have guidelines at all. Uh, I'll show you that on on the other one. You can just eyeball it, you know, and that, that'll be fine. There's no problem with that. All right, blow off the excess. That's that's soapstone. Looks great. Hopefully, it'll come off just as easily. So, okay. Um, go ahead and get your um, largest dotting tool and some some good paint whatever you have on hand will work no worries okay just now go ahead and go straight up and down okay and there's your dot okay that's your center dot all right Wipe off your tool. Get you a wet rag and wipe your tool off. Okay. That just makes it easier for the next time. Okay. All right. I'm going to go with the size 5 nail stylus, which is the largest one. And we're going to dip it. And again, you don't want it, you don't want it to go up your, up the, the stick here. You want it to keep it on the little ball. And we're going to go to the top. And then we're going to re-dip, okay, re-dip, and make another dot right in the bottom. So you've got one on the top, one on the bottom, and now you're going to go to either side. So go in the halfway point between these, and make a dot, okay, dip again, make a dot on the other side, dip again, go right in between this, right, okay. You want to get as close to the center dot as you can without actually touching the center dot. Now that gets easier with practice, okay? Don't worry about it if it starts, you know, the two dots are running together. Oh no, no, it's okay. It's all right. Just leave it alone and, and it'll be all right. I mean, you can clean it up. You can use a cotton swab and roll the paint off if you want, and that's fine. I like to get it damp. And then I just roll the paint off and away. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave eight. Now you could, uh-oh, you could fit. Oh, there you go. There. Now we can see. And we'll roll it off. See? 
And then you can touch that up with black if it, it doesn't normally come off that easily, but that's okay. Anyway, you could fit another dot in between those if you wanted to, but I would say starting off, I would just leave it. Just, just go with eight for now. And, uh, and let's work with that. All right. So let's get let's get another color out. Let's do uh let's do let's do this one. And we'll just use some, I'll use some more uh, Americana just because I love it. I'm loving it right now. Oh, um, a tip for these these annoying plastic caps that you have to dig with, right? Or you bite them with your teeth? What I do is so you know how you. You open it, right? And then you close it. So let's say you're closing it. I keep closing it and I pull away. <laughs> okay? That's that's a good tip. That's a great tip. I wish I had known that a long time ago. Okay, let's go with some blue just to switch it up. Um, and now I'm going to go with my smallest let me grab the colored one so you guys so my smallest um crochet hook and again you just want to dip i like to use my other fingers to to balance my hand okay that helps um that helps to keep it going straight up and down so of course i'm grabbing onto that and then i just dip the tip in make sure it's coated on the bottom completely Okay, not all the way up it. <laughs> and you just want to go in between, but on the outside edge, right? So you don't want to actually stick it down in between. You want to stick it out a little bit. Like that. Okay. I'm not making a spiral, I'm just making a design here. I just realized that these colors are what I did my first spiral video on. Okay, so re-dip. Don't dot and then try to dot again with without re-dipping. You need to re-dip each time you make the dot, each time. So go ahead, dip it, and dot, and then go back and dip again. Rotate it, and make a dot. Go ahead and dip again. Rotate your piece. You can leave your piece flat and stationary there, but it just seems to help if you move the piece as you go. Right there. Last one right there. Okay. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and get a, um, let's go ahead with the three, which isn't, I don't know if that was just recording all that. So you just want to go on the guideline, okay, and you want to put a dot with the next size, right? Okay. I think this is, yeah, this is recording now. All right. I'm going to go with a little bit bigger of a size now. I'm going to go with a, a green tool, which is I call size 5. And you just want to dip it and make sure it's coated all the way on the bottom and not all the way up the sides. And now you're just going to go right in between those two lines there, okay? Or right in between the two guidelines. Right in between the dots. On the outer edge, right there. Okay? And then re-dip. Rotate your piece. And dot right there. Okay? Same thing. There you go. Okay, there you go. See, you are making a mandala. All right. And let's go with another color, just to make this fun and colorful. And a bigger size. Yeah, and here's a 
what I've got as a number six. So light blue crochet hook. Again, just get enough. Now I think this is the one I'm not crazy about is that they're yellow. Let's see. So you're just going to go right on that line. Yeah, it's not terrible, but it's not the best yellow that I've used. But I'm probably biased. I love the multi-surface paints. Those are great paints. But they're they're thick and they're they're kind of like for a, just a completely different project. So that's why I'm not showing you in those. These paints are, are great beginner paints. These great these paints are just great paints overall. They really are. Okay, right on the line. You know what? Look, you're j I'm just going to re-dip it, and I'm going to re-dot that same dot because I don't like the way it's it's kind of see-through there. There, see? And just leave a little extra paint on there. That looks much better. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go ahead and leave, I think I'll give all of them a, a double dip for this yellow. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's, that works good. Just gonna line it up. See, I'm setting my pinky on here to help sturdy my hand. Now, if there's pain out here, you <laughs> don't stick your pinky there. And use your table. If it's that far out, then you can use your table and, and dock. You know what I mean? Okay. And the last one. And let's double dot that one. Perfect. Okay. Alrighty. Now I want to show you, before I get off of here, I want to show you how to walk the dots. Okay, it's called walking the dots. You can use any size you want. I'm going to go ahead and show you with the size 5, which is my largest nail stylus. Okay. And I'm going to use, let's use some, let's use some white. And, okay, so now you dip it once, okay, you've got some on there. Now you're going to dot straight above it, okay, right in the middle, and you're going to walk down one side, and then you're going to re-dip, okay, and then you're going to re-dot that main dot, and you're going to walk it down the other side. All right, so let's go ahead and show you. So I just dipped it. I'm going to dot, and I'm not going to re-dip. I'm going to go ahead and dot, 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 however many you want. Okay, they gradually get down and they go down in size. Okay, now you're going to re-dip to do the other side. Now, I like to redot that first main dot so that the, the dots are uniform. Dot, and then go down the other side. Dot, 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 dot. You just want to hug the, the curve there, hug the circle. Okay. And that's how it's going to look. And you can rotate it. Go ahead and dip your tool. And then dot on the line or right in the middle. And then go ahead and walk them down. Okay, re dip. Re dot that first dot. And walk down the other side. Any colors you want to use, any color combination you can imagine, do it. Um, metallics are beautiful paints. Um, they 
don't necessarily have to be reserved for top dots, but I know they're used to highlight pieces quite often. Um, there you go. Just keep walking them around. And then to build layers off of that, um, you can go ahead and put more dot. You could put a dot right here, a little bit larger, and then walk dots around it. Um, you can draw, you can start with shapes. I won't go into that right now. I'll go into that on a later tutorial. Um, but if you have any questions for me as of right now, uh, feel free to leave me a comment down below and ask me those questions so that I know that I need to cover it in another uh, another video for you, okay? So, there we go. I would definitely give yourself more room than what I'm showing you. I've been doing this now for a while, so I've gotten really used to, um, you know, getting them good and close together but I tell you what at the beginning of anyone I think everybody pretty much uh, has a hard time um, getting them close together so don't worry about it give yourself a little bit more space because you're going to get there it, you eventually will get to where you can you can really hug them in closer but right now give yourself some room and just play around and have fun really that's what it's all about you know, if this was a chore, then none of us would want to do it. It's it's a hobby, it's fun, it's something to do to relax, you know, nothing that should be stressing you out. If it's stressing you out, then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. And one more. I'll go ahead and finish that one so you can see it. Also, let me just go ahead and show you. Um, if you can see, this has got some buildup on the edge of this tool now. The paint dries pretty quick, so I'm going to go ahead and clean it. Now, I don't clean it between every single row, as you've seen, but at a certain point, you'll see it building up. Then you want to go ahead and clean it. You don't want to leave that buildup on there because that just makes for, um, it can make for a sloppy dot. So go ahead and clean your tool and then re-dip and... Dot it on down. There you go. Okay, so I hope that this tutorial was helpful. And if it was, please give me a thumbs up on the video so I know that it was helpful and that you would like to see more. That will be uh, my little indicator that you want to see more. So leave me a thumbs up. Definitely leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what else you would like to see. Um, I would like to walk you through some of the brush dots if you're interested in that. I'm, I'm going to keep on playing with this just because it's it's going good and it's I like the color. So, um, all right, I think that's about it. Um, I will see y'all next time. Thanks for watching. Bye now. <laughs> what are they called? I don't know. <laughs> and this is Pablo. <laughs> You are so cute.